I'm Roy Malloy and I am at the Geelong Prison with Deb Robinson who is one of the grandest tour guides on the face of God's <laughs> green earth. This prison cell is a fascinating prison cell because for those of you who are familiar with the Squizzy Taylor story, uh, towards the end of his career Squizzy just has this, this penchant for wanting to be a uh, king criminal really and wherever there's a, a crook that he can tie in with his great network, we've talked about his his network with uh, Buck and Ramage, and some of these, if there's a good crook he wants to be, he wants to be this guy's boss. Kind of like Pinky in the Brain. Yeah. <laughs> and so Squizzy finds this guy uh, called Angus Murray. I don't know, how, do you have any idea how they met? I mean, like, I'm not really sure. Um, no, I'm actually don't. I know it was sort of, they've known each other for a fair while, I think. But Angus is a, is a bank thief. The kind, literally the Wild West kind of stick him up. But to all intents purposes, he's a quiet guy. He's a pretty reserved kind of laid back guy who just likes to rob banks. <laughs> yes, and has done for most of his career. <laughs> tell, tell us a bit about his career. Um, well, he started off, I think he was uh, in South Australia initially. I know he was in South Australia early on. I know he was also in Perth. Uh, both times he got picked up for various offences uh, when he was there as well. Um, I do know he attended the wedding of Squizzy and Dolly Gray, apparently. He was right. there, he was actually at the wedding. I found something that showed that off. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but I'll be fine, it's energy. But uh, I know he was there, so he was around for a fair while, but he became, uh, he was arrested for an, an armed bank robbery and was sentenced to 15 years. Um, and for some reason, he ended up down here. In your law shop? No, in, in Victoria, I'm not sure. Yeah, so the, the armed robbery, I know that when he came to Geelong, he'd been serving. Years in Melbourne. Uh, he came down here, I'm not sure exactly why, because as I said before, most um, prisoners came down here for a medical condition of some description or some sort of short term medical care, whichever. He was down here for a fair while and he actually managed to get himself into a position of sort of trust uh, with being a clerk, so he was able to access a lot more of the prison uh, than he, you know, a normal prison would be able to. And part of what he did with that was he was able to seconder a number of sores. Um, or blades and things like that, which he managed to hide in the cells. Now, these cells were this colour back in, in Angus's time. Uh, so they would have had. Dirty brown? No, it was actually a whitewashed wall and it had a dark red strip down the bottom. And it was in that dark red strip that he used to hide, uh, hide right. the source. So we believe over a period of time he worked on the window and you can see the very small windows that we now, have. My understanding is he had a guy in the next cell. And because they both had, I think the other guy was a cook. Yes. And they both had a bit of leeway to not just be locked in their cell the whole time. So they, they hatched this plan together. Now, as impossible as this sounds, this is what they actually did. In the in the, the milling yards and, and round places, he was able to find, I, I think for what I said, literally bits of twig, right? Uh, small enough he could really conceal it in the palm of his hand. He would take slivers off the bed sheets or the blankets that were unnoticed, it looked like fraying, but he kept these, and he, I mean, look, I'm trying to look around now as to where he might have hidden it, but he's managed to hide it. All these twigs he then, so it's a, I'm just trying to figure out that, my fingers right, it's a bunch of twigs. He then put them one off the other like that. He only needed to get up there, and so he's done that somehow, he's gotten up there, and I actually know how he got up there. Oh, go for it. Uh, you're saying now there's a, a, a fixed table. Yep. Back in Angus's time, that's actually a direct result of Angus's escape. Right. They had a, a table that could be moved around, and he could actually put the table to be able to get up the top. Okay. After the escape, they were going to the tables and they were going to their cells. So they Angus Murray got more on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's standing on the table and he's leaning out there with his collection of twigs that are tightly bound.
create, recreate the mortar that was easily dug out again the next time. I imagine the dusting, the proper shortening version style. Yeah, I believe so. And, and the thing to remember too is a lot of these blokes were not done by the law and now do you remember the time. So you have quite a long period of time. So he's got this bloke in here that goes through there and out again. So it's really just that Very famous. 